to go to get through it. I'll try to answer all the questions as much as possible. And I think we're about ready to start. I appreciate you all being here. And I pray that you'll be blessed. We all will be blessed. All right. Shall we have a word of prayer as we begin? Kind Father in heaven, we are so grateful that we can call you our Lord and our Savior. And we know that you care for us, you gave your life for each one of us. So we ask you to bless us now as we discuss together this topic. Thank you for all that you've done. And so we present ourselves to you that we may hear, but also bless others with the remedies that you have recommended. Bless our time together, for we ask these favors with thanksgiving in your holy name. Amen. All right. Well, this is a, an important topic, but there are always solutions. The Lord will provide solutions and ask us to follow. So I've entitled my talk today, Lifestyle and Arthritis. I call it a joint account. And so there are some few statistics I'd like to just show you as we get started. Uh, it is estimated that between the 1990 and 2000, you could see that little chart there, the white show that less than 15% had arthritis. And 15 to 18 is the light blue. Take a look at 2020. In, 20, in, in 1990, there were only two major states. So look at 2020 and you see over 18%. Those are the statistics, and so we're a couple of years behind, but it may keep rising. Now, it is the leading cause of disability among persons age 15 through, you know, older years. It is the leading cause at the top uh, bar across there, as you can see there, arthritis and rheumatism. We'll talk about rheumatism in just a little bit. But it says that arthritis is the number one cause of disability. About six times as much disability arise from arthritis than from strokes high numbers, there is a solution. And I call it a joint account because it usually affects the joints throughout our body. So as we can see here, here are the joints, the major joints that's of a concern. The shoulder, the hips, the knees, the hands, the wrist, spine. These are all major locations for osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is one that affects certain body joints, along with a few of the organs as well. And I just want to show you here what stage one through four would look like through, from an x-ray perspective. Stage one, as you can see there, those two joints uh, have space between them. It's very important. 
Stage two, still a little space. Stage three, you began to see some fusing. By the time you get to stage four, those bones could have meshed together, okay? That's what happens as we're discussing this, this talk. And so that can be the, the elbow, the knees, the hips. And so with that, it's bone on bone. And it very excruciating pain. And this is how the normal joint would look. A little color was added, but this is for distinction. So you can see the muscles are on top of that kneecap. Then you have a bursa. The bursa is a sac of fluid that protects the moving muscles and tendons. The bursa is important. Okay, because it has this fluid that lubricates. So the tendons and tissues that attach to the bones and joint, that's the tendon, okay? And this at the bottom there to uh, my left, your right, I believe, the synovia membrane. That membrane, membrane releases a slippery fluid into the joint space, okay, a slippery fluid. So when that fluid is there, it's not going to just rub on bone on bone. And so it's like a lubricant, very important to have. And then there is um, this cartilage covers the end of the bones uh, in order to help absorb the pressure that's put on the knee. Let's just say that you love to jog and run. And you do that a lot without consideration. It may begin to get uh, a little worse. I see a lot of GIs, you know, in their exercise and their jogging sometime. I used to like to do it. And it can cause pro problems later down the years. But it's a fluid, synovia fluid, that's very important it, within that joint uh, in order to keep it lubricated. And those are just how the normal uh, one looks. And so again, osteoarthritis, the, it's a degenerative joint disease. So you have joints everywhere. The spine, that could be very painful too. And sometimes the, the joints within the sp spines will separate and uh, cause less fluid to, to get in. And then erosion of the cartilage, uh, leaving nothing to protect the bone in the joints. As a result, the bone rub together on each other. Bones may also bulge and stick out at the end of the joint. And so this is called a bone spur. Sometimes we see it in the feet. If the bone is sticking out and this is what's happening, some erosion may be going on. And sometimes it's not immediate, it could be over a period of time. So uh, this bony growth uh, can be of a concern. Now here is the, how arthritis began. You can see a few little points here. The cartilage began to destruct, okay, and then the loose cart cartilage particles will actually be in that fluid. Okay, small particles. And at the bottom there, you see bone spurs. You see how they began to stick out? Okay, and on the side of the 
body, the knee, if it's the knee, there may be little bone spurs sticking out and uh, that could be on all the joints. And then there, as arthritis continue, we see that there's an inflammatory process going on. That red coloring and the loss of space. You know, we want to keep those joints spaced so that they're not rubbing against each other. So this is what happens as the arthritis continue, and it will over time fuse and whatever it fuse you can't bend that joint anymore very painful and many times medication may be needed or some herbal agents to actually reduce the pain uh, in that joint and so here's another comparison of um, normal and arthritic joints. As you see here, the top one is a healthy joint with the cartilage. And then osteoarthritis, you can see it has already begun to fuse together. And that happens over a period of time. And the last one, the rheumatoid arthritis. It is an autoimmune disease. Um, just a few weeks ago, I did a talk on the autoimmune system and the current research that's going on. And they target, this is at the uh, National Institute of Health. They have discovered over 85, 85, autoimmune diseases are possible in our bodies. And I'll just, I, I'm not talking about that talk, topic today, but what uh, was discovered is that, you, you know, and you've seen uh, many of the peony flowers, peonies, peonies, peonies yes. Well, they are very good for the uh, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis and so but it's it's hard to grow in the south they like cold climate but you can still get it and it's very helpful it uh, in with this autoimmune uh, disease so that's just a little sidelight for rheumatoid arthritis yes sir what part of the plant do you use or how do you use it you okay uh it's called a white peony uh, it's the flower, it's the blossom. Now, very few white peonies, it's not the white that they're looking, they're looking at the root. The root is white for the peony, and if you get that, then you can use basically the entire plant. But that's some current research and it's very effective with lupus, and there are many, there are other, there are many other autoimmune diseases. And um, for people with alopecia, this is spots in the head where the hair began to, you know, leave, leave it becomes bald. Uh, and what's happening, it's the autoimmune disease is what's attacking the follicle of hair, okay? So this is why I mentioned it. So there are so many different kinds of autoimmune diseases. I didn't mean to go there. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Okay. Do you boil the You can get them in capsules. If you have a plant, uh, then you could certainly uh, do it yourself, okay? Make a, make a tea using uh, the uh, flowering portion or the um, leaves uh, themselves. With rheumatoid arthritis, the joint becomes inflamed. This uh, synovial membrane becomes thicker. 
and the joints began to swell, and the cartilage began to uh, erode. Uh, over time, the bone and the cartilage get destroyed, and that space that's between them will go away. So it's a systemic disease. That's what an autoimmune disease is. It's not just one system, but it can be throughout the body, okay, with other things happening. But that's the good news is that uh, even the POD, we have some things that are in the regular herbal family that can be helpful as well. I'll get to those in a moment. Um, <clears throat> Disease of uh, damage of the joint and the joint-related structures. In other words, all the structures that I've mentioned uh, that's connected uh, with the knee or the uh, hip or the joints. So these are the main areas that uh, for rheumatoid arthritis. Inflammation and diet. It is very important. Too much fat can promote inflammation and swelling in the joint or anywhere else in the body. It's not just the joints and the bones, it can be internal. It can be in the gastric system. It can be in the blood vessels, many. And so here is uh, one of the solutions that we encourage, and it, many of these are these problems will disappear. Now back to here, that's, uh, I've always wondered what that little ball is at the bottom. I think it's a cheese nut ball. That's the only, that's the best I can guess. It's a fat. And then the other fried foods and many of the pizzas, they can be very uh, high in fats as well. So here is the rub. Uh, one of the most important aspects of fat is the arachidonic fatty acids that are found in foods in addition to the ones that we cook. This is what increases the inflammation and it promotes inflammation or swelling and it can produce a lot of things. So here they are. Thromboxanes, this is a fatty acid. It has a swelling or inflammatory process in the blood vessels. They will start spasming. Okay, and the pain will grow. Uh, blood vessels. And so it has an impact upon the lining of many of these nerves and uh, blood vessels. And then there is the excess of PGE. This is a prostaglandin type 2. And if we get too much of the fatty acids, it actually will affect the stomach, okay? Inflammatory process going on in the stomach as a result of fats, and we'll look at a few more incidents there. And then um, also it will increase the risk of cancer. We're talking about fats. And many fats or fatty foods will have certain viruses. And that can cause, many of the viruses can cause cancer too. And thirdly, it is uh, present, uh, and that's over long term, it can have an impact upon uh, the risk factor of Alzheimer's. Okay. And then there is uh, the COX-2 inhibitors. 
the leukotrienes. This is um, another inflammatory process from the arachidonic acid. And so the arachidonic acid, you know, actually the, the arachidonic acid in the leukotrienes are the ones that affect the respiratory system. So we're talking about fatty foods. Now here is the key that I want you to consider and remember this. You know, we hear about fatty acids, right? There are, there are two, there are three types of uh, acids, fatty acids. Number one is, uh, I, I won't go through them chronologically or sequentially, but um, omega-6 fatty acids, have you heard of them? Omega-6. And then you have omega-3. And then you have omega-9. So here is how the body was made. If you're getting too much or too many fatty acids, omega-6, you're setting yourself up for problems. It should always be higher omega-3 fatty acids than 6, okay? Omega-3 should be about two times greater than the omega-6. And so for, remember that if you're getting your omega-3 uh, fatty acids, you're actually getting more omega-6 than 3. So be wise, be careful. Don't overdo the omega-6 because it stimulates the action of this arachidonic acid. And that's what uh, it's saying here. I've already explained it. But the leukotrienes, the thromboxanes, um, are the ones we need to keep an eye on but remember, there are sources. Here are a few sources of uh, arachidonic fatty acids. Meats, excessive omega-6 fats, excessive calories. So we have to reduce our calorie load and as we're as we reduce the calories, we have to have calories, but we don't want to overdo them because they will bind together with the other fats and cause more problems. So eat the number of calories that's needed. And do a little exercise there to keep it balanced. This is why I believe that arthritis uh, should be a, a, a part of a balanced account. You don't want the arthritis to just take off, but include the, include the lifestyle aspect as well. And so, omega-6, and I mentioned the COX-2 inhibitors. The COX-2 is an enzyme needed to make uh, pro-inflammatory PGE2. So that's what the COX-2 inhibitors do. And you've heard about Celebrex and there are others. There are some COX-2 inhibitors um, that are drugs. So we, we shy away from drugs. I'm not saying we won't use them if there's an emergency. But I have not seen not one drug that cures. Haven't seen one yet. And so, but there are, you know, if the COX-2 the, uh, COX inhibitors are important. And so, here they are. 
that natural COX-2 inhibitors, they will reduce that excess of the fatty acids, but without the drug effect, without effect. COX-2 is the enzyme, as I mentioned, but turmeric is one of the best inflammatories that you will ever find in this world. Turmeric. And it is better than some of the, the medications. No side effects. I'm not talking about curry now. I'm talking about simple turmeric. And then, of course, my favorite, garlic. I love it. I always encourage everyone in my audience, if you develop a, uh, if you develop a garlic dessert, let me know. <laughs> let me know. I want to know <laughs> if there's one. I like it. And then there are vitamin C. It's a COX-2 inhibitor. So we're talking about oranges, you know, and kiwi fruits. More vitamin C than oranges. Add red bell pepper. Not the KI, <laughs> but bell pepper. It's high in vitamin C. And then the nuts. We have the pecans and the other nuts are high in vitamin E. So all of these uh, COX-2 inhibitors that the Lord has given so we can decrease this enzyme that actually is a pro-inflammatory. And another favorite is ginger root. Ginger. Ginger is very good. I would certainly remind us that if there is hypertension, a high blood pressure going on, don't use dry ginger. Use the root that you can, you know, put in your blender and make a tea or however you would like to do that. But if it's hypertensive, no dry ginger. <clears throat> and another one is rosemary. I love the way that smells. And then there is resveratrol. It is another COX-2 inhibitor. So you see, the Lord has not left us alone. If it's not in that part of the world, then it's in this part of the world. And then it may be down in the islands. So the Lord created that which we need. It says the leaves of the tree will be our medicine and uh, the food we eat. Resveratrol comes from red grapes. Red grapes. Uh, and you also find the resveratrol in peanuts with red skin, okay? Some skin inside the nut is white, but the red, the uh, very good in, as a COX-2 in, inhibitor. <clears throat> red grapes. Now, here are the omega-3 fats that reduce inflammation, okay? So sources of omega-3 fatty acids, flax seeds, walnuts, spinach, soy. I'm not saying just drink soy milk. Uh, my friend over at Wirewood she likes to cook her soybeans. And they taste pretty good, huh? I got to like them. <laughs> so yeah, she makes uh, beans from the soy. And uh, another one is, are the chia seeds. It's high in omega-3 fats. So yes, oils are important, fats are important, but make sure we get uh, that become very temperate. A modified vegetarian diet show a significant improvement 
and number of tender joints. The number of tender joints, the number of swollen joints, pain score. You know, some people can endure pain better than others, whether it's one to 10. So this, the modified uh, vegetarian diet can be very helpful. Duration of morning stiffness. I'm sure we've all gotten up in the morning, it's cold sometime, and we need to get busy doing something so that uh, the stiffness will go. And so being able to move and um, enjoy the heat. And so fasting uh, is another area. I don't say fast for a whole week of everything, but uh, fast for a period of time, and then you can begin to try a vegan diet, you know, and use this. So the foods play a big role. Nutrition plays a big role in our health. And then the grip strength is often weaker. I've had some guests some of my patients who had arthritis, they could not grab the pan uh, boiler and they didn't have the strength to pick up. They would lose that strength. And so I've seen this improve with some of the lifestyle changes. And now remember we're talking about inflammation. Whatever you talk to your health uh, provider, uh, you could always ask for a sed rate or a C-reactive protein. This will let them know and you know uh, whether there's any inflammation going on. So that's how they determine whether there's an inflammatory process happening within. And so dark green leafy vegetables combat arthritis by providing these elements, chlorophyll, Magnesium, calcium, abundant antioxidants. Oh, I just, I don't usually say antioxidants. I just say eat all the colors of the rainbow in the course of a week. Can't do it in a day, but in the course of a week, can be very, very helpful getting all of these different, uh, the chlorophyll, the, all of the other elements there that we see, and the flavonoids. That's in the, the soy is in the flavonoid family. And there are other fruits and vegetables there as well. And the anthrocyanides reinforces uh, the natural uh, cross linkage of the cartilage. You know, uh, it's like a lattice work. You can lay uh, this layer on, another layer, and it strengthens uh, the cartilage. It protects the joints from the damage by the free radicals. They can damage too because they fly off the orbit and begin to strike the membrane. Okay, so that's what the free radicals will do. It inhibits the enzymatic cleavage uh, by enzymes released during this inflammatory uh, process. Decreases the release and synthesis of substances that promote inflammation. So the yellow, purple, blue, and reddish foods are the anthrocyanins. And then the flavonoids are often white and yellowish in color. And I believe, and what I've looked at, all the colors of the rainbow are very specific in dealing with, for example, the greens help with the digestive system. The red fruits and vegetables are effective for the reproductive system. 
the beta carotenes like in carrots, it's good for the immune system. So you see, every color is important. So eat and enjoy the colors of the rainbow. Other dietary issues, lose weight if overweight, <clears throat> eat largely of raw foods, not saying they should all be raw, you can't, you gotta cook those beans, <laughs> you gotta cook them because you break the bonds. If you don't cook the beans sufficiently and you, you don't break the bonds, then it can cause some real problems in the stomach, okay? Um, can bad indigestion. So making sure we cook the beans so that the bonds, some of these bonds are so tight in these beans that it will take a lot, a few hours before it breaks them apart. <clears throat> okay. And then avoid for all foods, avoid white sugar and diet and, and dairy. White sugar <coughs> is a chemical. White sugar is a chemical. I grew up on a farm, so we had a cane patch. If you get, when you get the cane, and we would, would uh, sell it and still do it the same way, you get the cane and you send it for it to be processed, they take 64 minerals and vitamins out of the sugar, 64. And so by the time they finish, you know, it's white. When we send it to them, it's usually brownish in color, but it becomes a chemical. And it's in harmony with some of the drugs that are illegal. It's addictive. Sugar is addictive. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, money is good to have, right? <laughs> but uh, yes, and I've even seen some people after they, you know, extract everything out of the sugar, they will use molasses to make it look like brown sugar. It's not brown sugar. In some of these manufacturers worldwide, the Caribbean, down in Okeechobee, in Florida and other places throughout the world. Be careful because it's a chemical and it's addictive. Consume foods rich in antioxidants, in other words, all the colors that you enjoy. Uh, and then the weak quadricep muscles, the, because the quadriceps are vital uh, to knee stability. Researchers speculated that muscles weaken, weakness may alter joint function. So we want to take care and not overdo any of our activities or exercises. Uh, but the quadricep muscles, it helps with the joints. Okay. And then the uh, atrophy or of disuse. When any tissue is not used appropriately, it will atrophy or shrink. That's the way it is. We have to, just like our muscles, well, the brain is that way too. Use it and it stay flexible. It works. Okay, so in the Garden of Delight, Genesis 2.15 said, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. He didn't just say that was their daily activity, their movement. 
God did not form man merely to uh, contemplate his glorious work. Therefore, he, for he gave him hands for labor, as well as the mind and heart for contemplation. If the happiness of man consisted in doing nothing, the creator would not have given Adam his appointed work. In labor, man was to find happiness as well as in meditation. So that's uh, something else that's important to exercise and why it's important. If you have arthritis, why exercise? Well, to keep the joints from being too stiff. To keep the muscles around your joints strengthen. The muscles, they have a tremendous role to play to keep them, you know, snug and tight within the, it's a sear. And then to keep your bones and cartilage healthy. This is why exercise is important. And this is according to the American College of Rheumatology. And then uh, <clears throat> to keep your bones and cartilage healthy. And the last one there. Uh, 30 minutes of moderate exercise a day. It can be divided into three periods or segments. You know, however you would like to at least 30 minutes a day. And remember that if you take 11 steps today, then you could probably take 12 tomorrow and go up to what your limit. Find something that you like to do now. Because if you don't like to do it, that's going to stress you. <laughs> Uh, so find one that you like and uh, go with that one. Uh, exercise improve the arthritic condition by increasing joint flexibility, increasing the nutrients flow within the joints. Remember that fluid, that synovial fluid, that helps it go through. Assisting in weight management uh, greatly improves the posture postural sway in older adults with osteoarthritis, okay? So yes, it helps with the walking and the sway to it, okay? So all of that, walking is the best exercise you can do because you use most of the muscles, okay? So more benefits from exercise. I'm, uh, so <clears throat> correct muscle imbalance. You know, so if we use the muscles and we're balancing them, then they do a wonderful job. Improve the sensory motor response. You know, the way we sense something and actually making the muscle, you know, operate. Okay, the, it comes to the brain, and then it stimulates, uh, and then we move. So that's the way uh, it works. So exercise is important for that as well. It decreases, uh, decreases the disability from the osteoarthritis. And it may prevent knee surgery. Okay, we see a lot of knee surgery going on, and... Uh, you know, putting a joint in. Sometimes that may be necessary if it's worn away. I've had some relatives to have, uh, that had to do this. Preserve the physical independence. We want to be independent, able to do all we can uh, throughout our whole life. Hydrotherapy helps arthritis. I love that hot and cold. <laughs> it's good. The hot and cold is good. Okay? Yes, it is. Sometimes it'll make you laugh <laughs> when you get the cold. 
uh, increase the flexibility of the tendons and cartilage, decrease stiffness, reduce muscle spasms around the joints, improve the blood flow, uh, raise the pain threshold. You won't feel the pain as readily with uh, hot and cold uh, alternations and applied, being applied. Use cold, if there's cold for, if it's really inflammatory, it's, it's really a high inflammation or swelling, then use the coal, okay? And I know I've, during my training, I had some family members that I could use my technique on. So, <laughs> so I would get a, a styrofoam cup, put water in it, put it in the freezer, and then I would help them by putting a little red a little uh, cold water, that ice, rub it on that joint, and it helped. They laugh, but it helped. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then there, here are a few more. Paraffin bath. This is a paraffin is something like a candle wax that can be used, um, you know, putting on certain joints. That can be helpful, too. And then ultrasound. Some ultrasound equipment can be used as well um, to provide some relief. And then the chiropractic treatments, uh, those who, are, who know how to do that, then um, they may have some techniques that can be helpful in reducing some of that discomfort. And then the range of motion. You know, we always want to try to go without, with the ability that we can do, do as much as you can without overdoing it, okay? So all of these are very helpful because it helps with those muscles. Uh, so that helps with the range of motion. And then they have, uh, you may be able to get this from some of the pharmacies. It's called a TENS unit. It's a trans... Uh, cutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. Okay, it's like a little thing you put on and it uh, stimulates the nerve in that area and that can be very helpful. And if you talk with your rheumatologist, uh, they may give you recommendations about it as well. Very inexpensive. <clears throat> and then of course, those massages are good. Okay, all right. So here are the herbs for relieving. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what do you think about infrared, infrared sauna? Infrared. The infrared also is a, is a heat that can actually help too. So yes, I love infrared. Yes, <laughs> you do, okay. <laughs> well, so you know how uh, whenever I go into the chamber and get the infrared, it gives me good thoughts. <laughs> yes, sir. What about ozone therapy? Ozone? Yeah. You mean up there? <laughs> Using oxygen and treatment. I'm not familiar with the treatments. I will look at it, though. Yeah. I like being outside, so... I don't want to get. Yeah. We had a doctor from Colorado for years. Usually they were very, very expensive, but he was providing the for that much. People were going expert, but I didn't try it because I didn't know much about it. Yes, I will. I will explore that. I want to have the most updated information, so I'll take a look. Absolutely. All right. So here are some of the herbal agents that's helpful in uh, the arthritic condition. White willow bark. Most of you are familiar with white willow bark. That's what aspirins are made from. Boswellian is one that can be used for arthritis. Boswellian. 
And of course, we already mentioned ginger and turmeric. And then the stinging nettle. Don't touch it. <laughs> well, yeah, you can touch it, but it bites. Okay. Well, you can't make a tea from it. Uh, it, it. It helps with the arthritis. Licorice uh, root also. And feverfew is one that's used for rheumatoid arthritis. The other arthritis is, <clears throat> of course, but uh, the feverfew has been one that's been used over time. And then um, Lastly is the capsium. That's uh, cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper, and you can make your old little ointment. I would say get your little vial, small, and add uh, <clears throat> olive oil. You could heat the olive oil and pour it in the little vial, and then put a half a teaspoon or teaspoon of, uh, depending on how large. It doesn't have to be, you can make it as you need it. And uh, put the cayenne pepper there. And if you don't do it that way, sit it in the window. And the sun will help extract the, you'll see the colors getting into the liquid, into the oil. And if you have a joint that's sore and stiff, you could actually uh, use that. But remember, don't put it in your eyes. Use a glove. <laughs> Use a glove so that you don't forget because it will wake you up. All right. So coming to a close here. Turmeric helps arthritics. We talk about turmeric now. Again, this we've talked about it. It's very, very effective. And um, it's been used around the world. Ginger helps relieve pain. Take a look at this little pie shape that we're looking at. Uh, the percentage of people experiencing pain relieved from the use uh, relief from the use of ginger. So if we look at the percentage, 55% those with osteoarthritis was helped by ginger. 12% in the blue, none. And 11% minimal. And 22% moderate. So ginger has an impact. This was the research that they saw uh, with just plain uh, ginger. Yes, ma'am. Is this something that you, take, you would take, or is this something, again, with oil that you would? You could, uh, with, the, with the ginger, if you don't have uh, high blood pressure, you can make a tea. You can make a tea. You can, uh, we like it, uh, again, if it's dry ginger, it can increase the blood pressure uh, if for someone with, you know, a blood pressure issue. I'm not saying it can't be used. You could make a tea. They make teas now from the dry. And, uh, but that's, I always ask about where is the blood pressure? How high is it? But this is the research. Uh, <clears throat> and so here's another one. Uh, the mind's influence, the mind influences joint pain. So they're comparing, this was research that was done by Dr. Burnell. Some of you know him, he was over at Wildwood for a number of years, but this was his research. Uh, and from his research, he said that uh, the placebo shot 
improves pain score by 60% while the placebo pill influenced it only by 40%. So this was in his article, it's still there in the Journal of Health. And so remember the Lord is never anti-education. He's always trying to uh, get us to be like Moses. You know, if, as he went to the burning bush, so at burning, he said, let me get a little closer. And he told him, don't come any closer. But that's the way he wants us to be curious about things that we don't quite understand. And with that, that he could give us more. Okay. All right. That's Cache. Some of you know Cache. <laughs> I'll call her right back. <laughs> I should have known to turn that off. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> All right. So stretching exercise, page management. As I said, this is a joint account. So make sure that lifestyle is on that account too. So it can lower the problem with the arthritis. And that's all for today. I hope this has been helpful in adding a few elements that uh, you can tell others about and try if they are needed.